Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about irrigating fig trees. And I get a lot of questions revolving around when to water my fig tree, how to water my fig tree, and even how much to water my fig tree. Well, let me tell you that answering that question is impossible for any plant, because I don't live in the same place as you. I'm not physically there, I can't see the plant, and everybody has different conditions. Maybe you guys are, instead of growing them in pots, you're growing them in the ground. So what I wanna mention here, this is my best advice that I wanna give you guys, and we're doing this in the first minute, is that water your fig trees just enough to keep them happy and healthy. Anything in excess is going to dilute the flavor of the fig of the fruits so here's a great example if i were to water the soil the roots of these trees would then take that water up through the roots go up through the stems and the branches of the tree and then release that water through their leaves that's normal right that's how every plant works that's growing plants 101 but also on the fig tree, a lot of that water is then stored in the leaves, but also stored in the branches, stored in those limbs, and even stored in the fruits. So that's why we're, our figs are getting diluted, is that they actually are sucking up water and storing some of that water in the fruit itself. So for me, somebody who really likes figs, and I'm growing them here in Pennsylvania, it's a very humid climate. We have lots of rain. For me to be growing them here is a bit of a challenge because water is the number one killer of our figs in terms of the quality of the fruit. So I'm actually trying different ways to get rid of water. And here's one of them. We actually put down over here in this pot, we put a trash bag on top of the pot. And we still have to sort of mess with this a little bit. Um, I do want to do a separate video just on this because we're gonna really try to keep out as much rain as possible and control 100% of the amount of water that gets into these pots. And this will particularly really help with our grow bags, our fabric pots, because not only is the water going into the soil on top, but it's also going into the sides of the pot. So by putting plastic, by putting down heavy duty trash bags around these pots is really going to limit and make sure that I'm having the exact amount of water that I want into these pots. Now, let's say I was growing them in the ground here in my climate. I don't water them. And there's a big debate. There's a theory that exists that I think to be true is that the fig tree has a natural antifreeze, the sap, that is stored in the wood. So that by the time dormancy comes, if enough of that sap is stored, it increases that natural antifreeze, that natural hardiness of the variety. Now, if we water it, the theory is that if we water it too much, you're actually diluting that natural antifreeze. And a lot of growers throughout Europe will tell you that in areas of land where there's a lot of potassium in the soil and also a lot of limestone. Now, what does limestone do? Well, limestone makes sure that we have the appropriate amount of moisture content in the soil at all times. It really facilitates that. It really makes the soil very well draining. And they say that in those locations, the trees are actually hardier. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but I am really starting to believe it. And that's why I planted a lot of my trees on higher ground, on a slope, so the water can then drain away in excess. Now, if you guys live in a warm climate, you know, California, Arizona, somewhere very dry, well, then you guys probably have already figured this out, right? By the time at June 1st, if you haven't figured out how to water your fig at this point, you are, um, you're probably messing up. You probably killed some trees. 
So for my advice to you guys would be to come up with creative ways, obviously to conserve water rather than try to get rid of water. You know, we all have different situations. We all have different problems as gardeners. So use mulch. Don't use black pots if you're growing them in pots. And obviously set up your irrigation to just give them more water. Now let's talk about the irrigation itself. You can see down in here we have drip lines that are then connected to spot spitters is what they're called. This is the particular fitting that you can get for your drip irrigation. And this will shoot out water in the direction that I choose. And this will shoot out water at a steady rate and it will put out a certain amount of gallons per hour. Depending on the color, depending on the spot spitter that you buy, you have to select the right one. That way you know how much water is going into this pot per hour. And then you can do this mathematically and figure out with our timer here. So here's how the timer works. They're all very standard is that I could put this on auto and this will automatically go on on a certain time of the day. I can set up the clock and say what time of the day it is. I can say, okay, let's start at night or in the morning. And then I can do it for how many minutes do I want it on? For 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, how often? Well, let's do it every day. And then basically through that, every day of watering it, let's say 10 ounces of water a day, because I can mathematically figure out exactly how much water is going into these pots based off of the steady rate of flow that's coming out of this spot spitter. So that way I can mathematically know. And I think in prior years, I think last year we, I figured it out so that I was giving my trees per five gallons of soil, four ounces of water every day. Now I'm sure it's going to be a bit different for me. I have a lot more leaves this year. A lot more leaves means we have more need for water. I also fertilize my trees a lot more this year. We have them in larger pots. So we really need to adjust this based off of what the leaves are telling us. If the leaves start to droop, they start to look sad, it's time to water them. If we're starting to get fruit drop and the main crops starting to drop, these are Braba as an example, but let's say these fall off. Well, then you know that we should check the soil and see if the soil is dry. If it is, that's a really good reason why, or one of the many reasons why we're losing fruit. So I hope everybody learned something and enjoyed this one. I know there's a lot more we could probably talk about, but I'm sure I lost a lot of you guys at this point. I wanted to really just convey the simple messages, um, you know, water them just enough to keep them happy and healthy, set up your irrigation, um, I don't recommend sips, you know, I don't recommend excess water unless you absolutely have to and you are somebody who's very busy, you can't get out here and water these every day. Setting up a drip irrigation system, uh, by the way, saves you a ton of time. And also, you know, just depending on where you guys live and your conditions, it's really important to observe that and figure that out for yourself. Because I can't be the one to do that for you. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this. Take care and we'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Catch you later.